to the Prophecy Club. I've got somebody in the office with me today that you're going to be very interested in hearing about. Now, as you know, we had Ephraim Rodriguez speak the other evening, and he told us that there is a great catastrophe coming to the world. And he told us that a large meteor is going to hit near Puerto Rico and cause a tsunami a thousand foot high there at Puerto Rico. And by the time it hits the east coast of America, it will be from 200 to 400 foot high, and it will go from 20 to 100 miles inland, wiping out the east coast of America. And it is going to hit an earthquake fault that is just west of Puerto Rico, hitting a little island called Mona, which will split America straight up the New Madrid Fault, straight up the Mississippi River Valley, from the Great Lakes all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. And large chunks of California will fall into the ocean. Now, this is the hand of God. And what I tell you in a second DVD that I made is that he's not the only one that saw this. There's actually been six people. God has shown a large meteor hits near Puerto Rico. Four people have also seen this tsunami hit the east coast of the United States. Six people saw that America split in two pieces. Three people saw that large chunks of California fall into the ocean. And now listen to this. Three people saw that America splits because we split Israel. In other words, when we force Israel to give the Palestinians a state, splitting Jerusalem, God is going to split America. Now, I'd like to say that's all, but that's only the beginning. Of course, then after that, we're eventually going to be attacked and defeated by the Russians on top of. <laughs> and by the way, none of this is in Revelation. This is not Wormwood. This is not the Tribulation. This is before that, in my opinion, Tribulation is probably 20 to 30 years away. Now, the other evening, I had a fella come up to me, introduced himself as Bill, and I have him in the office with me this morning. He began to tell me some things that confirmed everything Ephraim Rodriguez had been telling us. So with that, Bill, welcome to the Prophecy Club. Good morning, Stan. How are you doing today? I attended a meeting the other night with Ephraim Rodriguez present, and after some of the revelations he revealed to us, it drew a clear picture for me of some things I've been concerned about in the past. First of all, he talked about the flood that was coming up to the United States and the natural catastrophe, the earthquake that was going to come to the United States and the disaster that was going to happen. And several years ago, starting in 2010, I worked for a military agency, and we received orders to stop production of a certain type of vehicle and to pick up production on what we call a combat bridge truck. That truck is meant to span... Where there's water. Where there's water, that's correct. If a bridge has been knocked out, flood waters, anything like that happens, they can build a bridge over it in a relatively short period of time. Exactly what you would need where a meteor had hit and a big tsunami had hit, right? Exactly. Okay, go ahead. But what surprised us was we were ordered to stop production, tool up within 30 days, and produce these CBTs. The first CBTs that we produced went to Puerto Rico. Now, you were ordered to stop production on some other vehicles going to like Iraq or something and begin building these vehicles designed for a place where a water disaster had hit and build them like crazy, right? Exactly. Okay. Somewhere where the infrastructure, bridgework, highways, things like that were no longer in place, these trucks are designed to create roadways across bodies of water. And as soon as we finished the first order for Puerto Rico, we started building more. And that's another point. The first order went to Puerto Rico. Exactly. And roughly how many trucks was this? Approximately 70 of them, okay. if I remember they correctly. 70 trucks that are designed to handle emergencies where water has been a problem. Right. Now, the first order completed was smaller than 70, but the total that we sent to Puerto Rico was somewhere around 70 trucks, to the best of my knowledge. And after that, we started building other trucks for the United States, for the National Guard here at home. You know as well as I do, National Guard is called up in times of national right. emergencies, floods, disasters, things like that. The question began to arise out there between myself and some other employees, why are we building this many trucks? What is the government expecting? What's going on? You know. Okay, you could tell this was something out of the norm. Now, let me make the point here. You see, when Ephraim sent the letter, and I believe it was 2010. I know it was 2010. I want to say it was like June 2010. I can look it up. But uh, he sent off a letter to NASA saying, look, this asteroid is up here. This meteor is coming. Okay. And apparently uh, it showed them it came from here and it hit there. 
they came down, turned on the, the biggest, most powerful radio telescope in the world, which just happens to be located in Puerto Rico, looked up into the sky, and I believe they found it. And the reason I believe that is... Well, because in 2010 is when we received direct orders to instantly stop production on the trucks we were building at the time and tool up with the CBT trucks and get them in production within 30 days. Now, if it had been 2009, 2008, no connection. Nope, none whatsoever. But uh, in other words, all of a sudden they get Ephraim's letter and they call him a false prophet. They say, oh, no, this is not coming. But then they start building these trucks designed for a water disaster like crazy, right? Exactly. Okay. And like I said, some of us out there at work were concerned like, What's going on? You know, we've never had this many trucks come through for a rebuild in this type of they were in a rather big hurry to get them completed within a certain deadline. Mm. So we just started doing some minor research. and We came up with the U.S. Navy Earth Change map and we looked at that and went, hmm, that could be why. But they're predicting a earthquake along New Madrid fault line, which would explain why they might need bridge building trucks. Of course, at this point, you didn't understand what was going on at Puerto Rico. You just suspected it was some kind of water disaster here, which is coming. Go ahead. Exactly. Exactly. And then there are other things that led to our suspicions about this. It's just some odd things have been going on lately. In 2009, for example, I received a notice or I'll say a recruitment notice across the AKO website, which is Army Knowledge Online, looking for internment camp re-education specialists to work with FEMA. Oh, really? Exactly. You know, that kind of... So this is not theory stuff. This is real. This is real, yeah. And that notice came across the website for 24 hours only. Then it was gone. And it alarmed several of us, like, why do we need internment camp re-education specialists within the United States? And that and just various other factors to build up a body bag. Listeners, are you feeling it? Do you feel the cold chill just come over you when he says that? If you don't, you should be. And then, like I said, just the uh, information we received about the buildup of body bags, the three-body coffins, things like this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where's the body bag? Where, where did this come in? Did you hear about this, or did you hear about that at the meeting? I heard about that prior to the meeting, but when Ephraim Rodriguez mentioned that at the meeting, that was another thing that caught my attention, where, you know, it's just like, these things are adding up too much. Something's going to happen, you know. And, and to be honest with you, Stan, I had no idea why I was attending that meeting, you know, I just had this urge really? that I needed to go. It was my birthday, so I thought, well, I'll take a little mini road trip because I live quite a ways away, and I would just attend this meeting because, I mean, I like what you have to say a lot of times. I'm interested in your program. I thought, well, it's a good day. I'll just go. When I got there, I was amazed. And the more that Ephraim Rodriguez spoke about what was going on, the more things just kind of fell into place. You know, just the uh, CBT production, we also produced another type of truck, which is called a dry support bridge truck. Now, two of those went to Puerto Rico. Those trucks aren't real common, and we don't have a whole lot in U.S. military inventory that I am aware of. But they also sent two of those to Puerto Rico, and that just seemed kind of odd. That okay, and what do they do? What they actually do is they build a hard bridge across a narrow body of water. They work by themselves with support trucks that actually bring bridge sections up to them. They span the bridge with a crane. The support trucks bring the bridge sections up. They lay them in place, and they're done. Did I hear you say that they ordered two different kinds of vehicles to build two kinds of different waterways over water areas? In other words, exactly what you use. These are designed for disaster areas where water has been a disaster, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and they're building two different kinds. Did you say two different kinds? Is that what you said? Yes, sir. Now, these, these trucks have been in the U.S. military inventory. They've been there for a while. I mean, it's just a common combat oh, yeah, truck. Oh, yeah, yeah. You never know what's happening. I understand. But, but when they start building this massive amounts of them and sending them to Puerto Rico, something's up. And the other thing that caused kind of a stir among, among some of us out there is the fact that they built more trucks than they have units to support the trucks. So they actually created new units around some of those trucks to support their operation. Units meaning people. Right. So, you know, that to me, that speaks like they know something's coming. Exactly. And another little thing that kind of triggered my suspicion that something was going on, not only the internment re-education specialists, the Navy, earth change maps, the CVTs and stuff like that. Being with the military, most people would know what an MRE is. Meals ready to eat. Exactly. And uh, 
we had a relatively good supply of them. I mean, we could get them pretty much any time we wanted to. But about two years ago, these MREs started drying up. Now, they're still available on the civilian market. Drying up, you mean as in they were moved out? Uh, they but, didn't dry up and throw away. They, they, they used them. They just started disappearing because they were being used or being moved to another place. The, the, avail the availability through the military for the MREs basically dried up. I mean, they, they were no longer available in the amounts they were in the past. Like, say, for example, a guard unit goes to a drill on the weekend. They would issue the guard soldiers MREs to eat. If they didn't eat them, they could take them home, do whatever they wanted to with them. Past two years, if they weren't eating them, they collected them back up. In other words, they were keeping a tight rein on them. Hmm. And the U.S. military, as far as I know, is still producing them in mass quantities. Well, I also, here, I'll tell you something that I ran across probably, oh, five years ago. I decided that I was going to look into possibly offering freeze-dried food through the Prophecy Club. So I called up, and I'll tell you the name of the place. I called up Mountain House, and I said, what do I got to do to be a, a distributor? And they basically said, uh, jump over Mars. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> ain't going to happen because they are not taking any more distributors. And I said, what do you mean not taking any more? Well, the, the U.S. military buys all we can make. We have a contract with them. And part of the contract is we cannot add any new distributors. In other words, everything that we can possibly make, they take. And I was aware of the same thing. They know something's coming. Yeah. And this is not just a tornado. This is not a hurricane. This is not a flood. This is something mega. I mean, they call it Ellie, an extinction level event. Ellie, E-L-E. -E. We'll be right back after this message. You must... I said, you must get these two DVDs outside of the birth of Christ. I think this is the most important information since the flood. Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez was shown in a vision that a large meteor will hit near Puerto Rico and cause a thousand foot tsunami there, but it'll be 200 to 400 feet high and go a hundred miles inland on the east coast of America. It will also split America from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico and large chunks of California will fall into the ocean, killing millions of Americans. In a second DVD, I put the whole picture together, quoting six other people that also saw a large meteor hit Puerto Rico, four for the tsunami hitting the east coast of the United States, six the split of America in two pieces, three large chunks of California falling into the ocean, three also saw the reason for this is because America forces Israel to split her land. Get both DVDs valued at $60 for a gift of $30. It's good for the ministry, but you have to have this information. Call 785-266-1112 or go to Prophecy Club dot com get the meteor offer today get it today i've heard the testimonies of over 35 different people that have died and gone to heaven but i think dean braxton's testimony is the best simply because he spent the most time there he spent an hour and 45 minutes in heaven he tells you what jesus and the father and the throne looks like and our new jerusalem and our mansions whether it's a pyramid or it's a square Everything is based on love and is alive. How we communicate, whether we talk or just by thoughts, how we move, do we walk or do we fly, our relationships with our families and others, and our glorified bodies and garments and what they look like. Normally valued at $30, but you can call a Prophecy Club and get it right now for just a gift of $15 or more. That's 785-266-1112. I spent 45 minutes in heaven by Dean Braxton. 785-266-1112 or prophecyclub.com. And now, back to the program. And I was aware of the same thing. They know something's coming. Yeah. And this is not just a tornado. This is not a hurricane. This is not a flood. This is something mega. I mean, they call it Ellie, an extinction level event. Ellie, E L E, extinction level event. You know, just from the information I gathered, I prayed for guidance, and I never got anything clear other than the fact that there were going to be a lot of really hungry, really scared people, and there was going to be a major disaster hit this country, and there was going to be confusion and chaos. Well, let me throw one more thing in there. You've heard that they've ordered billions of rounds of ammunition. Now, the last order was specifically, if I can remember the details of it, I think it was a 308 
silver tip bullet with high capacity uh, powder and explosive. In other words, this is not just target practice ammunition. This is not even just normal military ammunition. This is sniper. In other words, extremely powerful, extremely accurate ammunition, and they ordered it by the truckloads. Now, now see, all of this says big something bad is coming. Exactly. The 308 round, uh, the military nomenclature for it is 7.62 by 51. All right, that's the military specifications for that very same round. Most of our smaller sniper rifles shoot that round. A lot of our squad support automatic weapons fire that round. I saw. Exactly. Most of your armored vehicles are equipped with a 762 by 51 machine gun of types. The ordering up of the ammunition, you know, that's been kind of known for a while, but it was primarily pistol ammunition. But if you, you used to be able to get that surplus 762 by 51 ammunition pretty regularly at a fairly decent price. But Let now, guess, not so. <laughs> not can, anymore. You can still find it, but it's not military surplus. It's civilian manufactured to military specification, which is a difference. Various government agencies that have no need to buy ammunition have been buying contracted lots of 40 caliber pistol ammunition, hollow points, things like that. And they say it's for target practice and it's the least expensive ammunition. Well, no, it's not. It's not the least expensive and it's not the easiest to manufacture. And that's another red flag. You know, the government buying up ammunition, that's why a lot of civilian ammunition sales have kind of dried up or been real hard to get. If they buy it, we can't have it. Also, too, uh, the U.S. government has just shut down the only lead smelting plant that was still left in the United States. So right. now we have to purchase all our lead pretty much from China, which means the prices are going to go up for... And it also means that the government can control it. Exactly. They import it, they control it. That's right. The other thing that really got my attention too was in june of this of 2013 department of homeland security president obama and vladimir putin signed a treaty to bring 15,000 russian troops onto american soil to act as security personnel for events such as the super bowl of all things presidential inaugurations etc didn't make a whole lot of sense because we had a reduction in force coming to the u.s military at that time why would our government reduce our own military and bring Russian troops on our shores to work security. Surely our president doesn't have plans to see our nation fall. Well, I would hope not, but all indications are that things aren't looking really good for us right now from any point of view, one way or another. Another thing too, in case anybody didn't know about it, you could look it up on the ACLU website about the no constitution zone that now surrounds the United States. A hundred miles from within, a hundred mile radius from anywhere in the border in the United States is considered a no constitution zone, which means basically law enforcement officers, they don't have to follow the constitution if they don't want to. And that's determined by the federal government. They provide security for our borders, supposed to, but that would possibly explain also, too, why so many illegal aliens are allowed just to cross the borders, because the Constitution is not in effect for that first 100 miles inside the U.S. borders. Okay, so let me play this back and see if I understand what you're saying. You're saying that you are working for this military contractor, you're building these trucks, everybody's happy, and then all of a sudden this rush order comes in for you to switch from building these other kind of trucks for Iraq or Afghanistan, someplace like that. All of a sudden now, it's almost an emergency order. You got to build these trucks, two, two different kinds, designed to go into an area that has had a water disaster and build bridges, correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. We were under the gun to get these trucks built within a certain amount of time. And it was a pretty good rush order. They were quite complicated to build. And, pretty expensive too? Well, uh, not real expensive because we were re rebuilding existing military equipment. Now, purchasing brand new, they would have been very expensive. But we did them for about one-third the cost of what they got to spend to build them. And you weren't the only one that started kind of raising eyebrows over what's really going on. Exactly. There are a few of us that work out there that have our heads out of the sand, so to speak. A lot of the others just like, well, it's just a job, no big deal, not worried about it. But, you know, most people don't question a lot of, some of us, like, what's up? Okay. Well, obviously, nobody came up to you and said, well, hey, the reason we're building these and sending them to Puerto Rico and also building some here is there's going to be a meteor hit down near Puerto Rico, and we just want to be prepared. 
Exactly. Nobody but, walked up and said there's a meteor going to strike. <laughs> Nobody told us exactly there was going to be an earthquake or anything like this. But anybody that can put two and two together can kind of see something is going to happen and it's not going to be good. Okay. When you started listening to Ephraim about him personally, what did you think? Is he lying or telling the truth? I thought he was telling the truth. I had no reason to suspect he was lying. I could see the concern in his face. It wasn't somebody who was trying to persuade somebody of something that wasn't true. And some of the things he started saying and his information that he had got from the Puerto governor down there and then some of the slides he was showing about the military code and then the fact that he mentioned storing body bags, coffins, Russian troops on Puerto Rico. Now, remember what I said about the Russian troops That's earlier? That's right. Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. People in Puerto Rico are U.S. citizens. So if the Russian troops are in the continental United States, they might be in Puerto Rico also. And it just, too many things ran true. Too much things start, too many things started coming together and made sense. And I'm just like, I was in awe at that point in time. Okay, so bottom line, bottom line, do you believe there's a meteor headed to the Earth? There's a meteor coming to this Earth. I'm pretty well sure of that because I know NASA has pretty much suspended most of their space operation. What are they doing? We're sending astronauts up on Russian space, space station, you know, the International Space. We're not launching any more space programs or anything like that, but they've got the Hubble telescope. And like you said before, the big radio telescope down in Puerto oh, yeah. Rico, they're looking for stuff out there. I think they found it. As, I think they found it. I think they're scared. I think they're preparing. Yes. But they aren't telling. Well, no, they're not going to tell anybody because it would cause a panic. Just think if they told the people of the United States, 100 miles of the East Coast is going to be flooded. Most of the West Coast is going to be flooded. Mississippi River Valley is going to be flooded. It would destroy our economy, shut everything down and, right Absolutely. Then. Well, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, people would begin to move out of those areas like rats leaving a sinking ship. And with good cause, they would start selling their properties and moving and then, of course, they would be saying, well, where do I move to? And you talk about all kinds of emergency preparations like crazy would be going on. And instead, they think it's better to just let people die. I feel they figure the pandemonium that would cause by an early warning is too much trouble to deal with. It's easier to clean up after the event. Plus, the other fact is, you know, that's a good excuse to declare martial law, which, of course, we would probably need some form of martial law in a national emergency like that. But that just... Well, that explains why they bought all these bullets, why they're, they're getting this ammunition. And, of course, now these these emergency trucks for water uh, emergencies. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and just the food storage they've got going on, like you said, with Mountain House and all this other stuff uh, where, you know, you couldn't get a distributorship. And I've heard that from various other people who have also tried to get a distributorship with Mountain House. Did you place an order for the Meteor Order to get the two DVDs talking about it? No, I was there. I didn't place the order for it. Wait, but were you there Sunday morning too? No, I missed Sunday morning. Well, you missed my talk. Yeah, I missed your talk. <laughs> so, because I, I covered a lot of the stuff. On yeah. That, you know. So, I mean, my friend that was supposed to be here with us today that couldn't make it, he wanted to order the DVD. And I imagine I'll probably end up ordering them also one way or another, you know. But. Yeah, it's, it's important to have it. Based upon you listening to Ephraim, what would you suggest to people do in terms of getting this information to other people how are they going to start getting it out spread the information let everybody know that something's going on be prepared for any type of disaster that comes your way big thing is get your heart right with the lord that's my take on it because there are going to be millions of people probably lose their lives during this event and i'd rather They'd be right with the Lord in case something like this, because God will protect us. God will look over us. You know, and Psalm 91 says, He dwells in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I love the Lord. He is my refuge, my, my God, in whom I will trust. That's right. And down That's in it. verse 7, it says, A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right hand. hand. But it will not come nigh thee, for only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Exactly. Yeah, and we can go on with that. But the point is, God is quite capable of taking care of us, but as the angel said, and I've said it many times on the radio, I'll say it again, as the angel said to Demetri Dudeman, that if they wait until the trouble hits, he will not hear their prayers for protection. He will, of course, always hear their prayers for salvation, exactly. because all that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But if you wait to clean your life up until the trouble hits, he's not going to hear your prayers for protection. You must Stop sinning now. All that you think is wrong. And I suggest you need to get your Bible out. King James. You've got another one of those perversions. It's good to start fires with. Don't give it away. Somebody might read it. Get you a King James Bible and read it like your life depended on it. 
because it does your eternal life. Read it more than anything you do. Read, read, read that Bible. Start at end and go to amen. That's in the beginning. Okay. And you go to amen. That's the last word in the Bible. Go to Genesis through Revelation. Only three chapters a day and you can get through it in one year. Read the Bible. And then I suggest you get involved in a church. Notice I didn't say visit. Notice I didn't say go once in a while. You need to put your feet down. You need to plant your roots in a church and submit yourself there to the leadership. Now, I understand it's going to be hard to find a church because most of them are 501c3s. It's going to be hard to find one that's not teaching at NIV. It's going to be hard to find one that's not pre-trip. But And you may have to go to one of those churches knowing that they're wrong. But better it is to go to a church that is 501c3, NIV, pre-trib than not to go to all because Hebrews 10 25 says forsake not the assembling of yourselves together and so much the more as you see the day approaching it is important to fellowship with other believers because they'll strengthen you they'll help keep you from falling and maybe you can help someone from falling yourself exactly I agree with you 100 percent Stan and as far as the Bible goes King, that's it. I that's agree right. 100%. New International Version, New Living Translation. I've read most of those, and they do not speak the word as I see the truth Amen. in it. Amen. I appreciate you coming, Bill. I appreciate so much, and you sharing all of this information that confirms, brothers and sisters, there is a meteor heading to the earth. It is going to hit, and I hate to say it, but it could. I don't know, but it could hit real soon. I strongly suggest that you get this DVD set called The Meteor Gift Offer. You can get it by calling 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. You must, I said you must get these two DVDs. Outside of the birth of Christ, I think this is the most important information since the flood. Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez was shown in a vision that a large meteor will hit near Puerto Rico and cause a thousand foot tsunami there, but it'll be 200 to 400 feet high and go a hundred miles inland on the east coast of America. It will also split America from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico and large chunks of California will fall into the ocean, killing millions of Americans. In a second DVD, I put the whole picture together, quoting six other people that also saw a large meteor hit Puerto Rico, four for the tsunami hitting the east coast of the United States, six the split of America in two pieces, three large chunks of California falling into the ocean, three also saw the reason for this is because America forces Israel to split her land. Get both DVDs valued at $60 for a gift of $30. It's good for the ministry, but you have to have this information. Call 785-266-1112 or go to Prophecy Club. Dot com. Get the Meteor offer today. Get it today. Brothers and sisters, I have been doing the Prophecy Club for over 20 years. We've had about 150 speakers make about 300 different titles, all dealing with Bible prophecy. But may I say, I think that these two DVDs may be some of the most important DVDs to get if you want to understand what may be coming in the near future. The first one is talking about how America is the final Babylon. The second one is talking about timelines, how soon the tribulation may start. And they claim that the tribulation will start in 2018 and be all over by 2025. They have lots and lots of research to be able to say that. Get both of these DVDs valued at $30 each, but now you can get both of them for a gift of just $30 to the Prophecy Club. 785-266-1112 or online at prophecyclub.com. In Time Babylon and Prophetic Timelines.